Welcome everybody to our eighth presentation. Let's open with a word of prayer. Holy God, we thank you for your watch care over us. As we try to understand our relationship to our environment, to the food that we eat, and more importantly, our relationship towards you. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. We've been trying to understand our relationship to food. The question that we've been trying to address is whether or not an individual person's diet their choice of food should be a standard or an example for others to follow. If it is, why? If it isn't, why? And if you shouldn't copy somebody, what is the correct diet that we should be following? And the last part, have my views on diet changed compared to some of the older presentations that I have done in the past? So if we're going to try to understand the subject of diet, What I wanted to discuss amongst ourselves was why diet is such a central feature around our, our faith, our religious experience. As we have tried to understand that question, the question that I have posed, one of the points that seemed important to me which I think came as a surprise to at least some people that this relationship to food that we have isn't really a biblical concept. And that seemed to trouble people. So I want to say
that the diet question is not a biblical one. If it's not a biblical issue, what is it? So I'm suggesting that diet is an Adventist. question it really is purely a, a, an Adventist phenomena because Christians really don't have this relationship with food that we have I'm sure that most of you, if not all of you, have been negatively affected in your relationships because of this diet question. The two main problems that Adventists have is Sabbath and diet. If we stuck to the biblical plan, which is given on the board, we had it as one, two, and three, three steps. we would not have an issue or a problem in our relationship to others. And it would make our lives, our relationships much easier. So the question is, why are we doing this? And if you go back to the 19th century, there are two things that are happening. What are the two things that are happening in the 19th century? This guy? I think it's those that you were saying. Uh, learning about Sabbath and learning about um, temperance. We're in the 19th century. And I'm saying there are two phenomena, two things that are coming together. And Deniska said Sabbath and temperance. Anyone else? Tamina? Slavery was done away with. Can online translators hear that or they don't understand that? They can't hear you. Slavery was done away with.
slavery was abolished. Anyone else? Did you have a comment? Monica said the same as Tamina. Carol? Sabbath and health reform. Same as Deniska. No? So Deniska said Sabbath and temperance. And you said Sabbath and health reform. I'm sure if I ask Deniska what temperance is, she'll say health reform. Yes? So I think they're the same. So Esther said, what am I talking about? She wants to know what the things are. There are two movements. What are they? Who, who said something? In German, please. So they... Suffragettes. No. I, I thought we're doing a study on food. And I heard suffragettes and slavery. There's a hundred things going on in the 19th century. And then someone's going to tell me voting or something. Which they already have. It's a diet study. There's um, an ex advances no. in... Emma. Sorry. No. There are advances in health work and medicine. There's an awareness of health issues and natural remedy institutes um, how do I put it? So is that two or one? Okay. There are two phenomena that are happening. The 19th century begins when? When we say 19th century, it's the, the numbers are 18s. So when does the 19th century begin? And it's not 1901, 1801. Help us, Esther. Seventeen ninety-eight. The time is the end. Are we okay with that? What's the first movement? Adventism. Comes in various dispensations or phases. Starts with the Millerites, if you like. So that's number one. And the second one 
is what the Niska and Carol gave us. And Emma clarified. It's the temperance movement. It's not health per se, it's the it's a movement. Adventism is what kind of a movement? Some have that. Religious. So we have a religious movement. If you don't know, you can guess. Connected to a No. She said a temperance movement. She said a temperance movement. That's no. What do I put here next underneath? Uh, expecting of the second coming. Temperance people aren't ex temperance people aren't expecting the, the second advent. Paula said secular movement. We have a religious movement and a secular movement which are moving forward independent of one another. What does that sound like? Please don't shout out answers. If you want to say something, put your hand up unless I call you. Yes, sir. German, please. Oh, no, not German. What does she need to do now? Church and state. What's my question? Okay. What, what does it sound like? Not church and state. Just one word answers. Perfect. Counterfeit? No. Uh, external and internal. External and internal. No. They're all reasonable answers. What do we care about? Health. No. I don't care about yesterday. I care about, don't care about tomorrow. Today. 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 Sounds like today. Someone give me the story for today. It's all there. It's the same religious and do you mean today as in what you put on the board? Or are you looking external? I asked, what does it sound like? And then I said, it sounds like today. So give me a brief overview of why it is like today or sounds like today. Again, try. 
Why did you walk away? We do not need to know any Ellen White. Oh, sorry. I can try. So uh, I see that uh, in the world today, there are many people promoting health issues like secular and uh, and uh, nothing to do with health. No. Okay. I thought uh, about health. It was my nothing to do with health. Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry. No. So, going back to Paula. In the 19th century, we have this dynamic. We'll go back. We'll go back and, and expand on it in a second. When we did that, I'm saying that sounds very much like the dynamic we have today. There's a secular phenomena and there's a religious phenomena. So tell me what the model is today. So the the religious phenomena is like... Uh, so we're number one. So not... Our movement or... or uh, just in general, f religious. I only speak when I when I point okay. my finger because I can't hear. My translators are two seconds behind us. Now, the religious phenomena. It's like our movement or the date. Uh, the date. Uh, Ninety eighty nine. Okay, so our move. Uh, no. Next bit. It's time of the end. Next but, bit. But not for Advent, but yes, for Adventism again, not for our month. Help. 1989. Time of the end. Is the creation of this movement. The creation, it's okay. Carry on. The, we the second. We have This is the. the no. Is everybody okay so far? Number two. Wow. So we have a temperance movement going on now, or not temperance, but... It's not health. It's not health now, it's... Okay. We'll stop there. We'll come, ba come back to the first number, to the 19th century. Number one, what's what is number one interested in? Second coming. Are we translating? How does that? Got you, got you, got, you, got you. the second advent. So. They're interested in the second advent. Are they interested in temperance work? No, they're not interested in temperance work. If we're going to do today, you have to do the same model. We're comparing the two. 
What's the temperance movement interested in? Number two, the temperance movement. No? No, we haven't done number two. Here. Number two. Health. Health. Number one is interest. Number one is interested in heaven. And number two is interested in the earth. There's no connection between the two. They're on different trajectories, paths. Are we okay with that reading of history? Sometime through the 19th century, we'll say halfway through, something changes. So the answer is one or two. Who changes? One. Shout out the numbers loud, I can't hear. Nobody? One. You said two. Two changes. Two changes. Put your hand up if you're number two. And you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Ignore that one. Halfway through, what happens to number one? What happens to number one halfway through, Tamina? They realize they're not going to heaven. Their mission has failed. They're going to stay on. Not on, they're going to stay in the same place as number two. Tamina said, we call all of that experience Laodicea. Are we okay with that reading? And now they say, what did they say? Number one. Someone else thinks I said. Monica, what did they say? To themselves, who? What did they say? We have to take care of our bodies better. We will stay here longer. The second bit? We will stay here longer. Can France not repeat the statements twice, please? Because you're speaking over the English and I can't hear it. So when you translate it the first time, there's a lag between, there's a two second lag between what you say and what we say. So when I tell them to repeat what they say, don't repeat it again because we go into a loop. 
if that's okay. Okay. So English. Don't don't no, just English. It's been we, done before. We are staying here longer. Okay. We can translate that now. <laughs> Thank you. Number one changes. Because their mission has failed. And they say, we're going to stay here a bit longer. We're all dying young. So we better get into the temperance work. Are we okay with that reading of history? And number two, never changed. We okay that everybody put their hand up with number two? They don't change. Tamina? Yeah, yeah, just translate. Uh, Tamina said that they they joined number two. Okay. Today, we have a movement that's religious. And its connection to number two is... Nothing. There is no connection. Yes? Okay. So tell me what number two is. Peter. The vegan movement, they, they want to uh, keep the animals safe. I know it's tempting, but but I did help. And what did I say, Paula? No connection with our movement. No, not this. No connection to diet. Number two is not about diet. In this guy. About human relationships. Peter. Equality. Human relationships, equality. Tamina? Treat animals. In a moment, Carol. Environment. I'm just going to put climate change. Is that what you mean? Basically, yes. Human rights. Equality. Animals. Was that, is that everybody so far? So far. Emma? I'm sorry. Feminism. Radical feminism. Which one? Radical feminism.
فهي سامتس او اصلي سايد Nice for climate, see, yeah. Climate. Anyone else? Anyone else? Can I call your question? It has to be in German because the Germans. Oh, okay. Go ahead. What's your question? Don't tell me what you understand, just your question. I know. Uh, just tell me your question. I know it's difficult. Your question that you began with, is it related to morality? Everything is related to morality. They didn't make laws like that. It came, I think, in the century afterwards. Uh, At a federal level, at least. But it's, it is moral. Any other points? What do we want to put here for number two? All of that? If, can I put equality, feminism, and LGBTQ rights under human rights? So I'm going to put... Human rights... and climate. Are we okay with that? We're pretty good? This is a secular. Halfway through? Who changes? The religious movement, number one. Anybody, anybody want to ask a question or comment? So, yeah, no. Raquel made an important point. Just the one word that, she, that I want to pull out from her comment. Which was what? No. Yep. <laughs> what was it morality? What was it alcohol? Mm -hmm.
Yes, but I want a different word. What did they get interested in? Earth. Politics. They realize you can talk about any of these things. And it makes no difference. We have human rights. We'll skip climate. I think it was Raquel. She used another word. What was that one? Follow through with the logic. Don't do random stuff. Do you remember? They're going to enter into politics. I'm not saying it's related to the temperance movement, but there's another phenomenon that connected to this. Suffrage. We won't call it. The, we won't call it the suffragette movement. What is suffrage? It sounds it sounds like suffering, but it's not. It's not really suffering. Can someone spell it. Just one person. Somebody? Suffrage. S U F F. Suffrage. What does suffrage mean? Simply. Vote. And vote is what? Politics. We okay? What do we keep on complaining about the 19th century? In 1844, what do we keep on complaining about? If you don't know, say I don't know. Don't know? No. No. That Millerites refused to vote. Who was that? Oh, okay. You changed your mind. Oh, okay. So, no, sir. Yeah, politics. Everybody can vote. Okay, so we go back and we say the problem with all of these Adventists was they don't get involved in one of the most important elections which is 1844. And then people say, number one was run by
to run by God. It was run by a woman. And the problem with women is they don't want to be involved in politics. So, number two, they're going to try to get into politics. Then number one says, we will, we will what? We'll join them. And get into politics. Uh, are we okay with that reading of history? Some say something. I never asked if we we're okay. I just said that's what we do. What political issue did we say we will now get into? Number one, what was the political issue? You can answer it two ways. No. That's not our story. We, this is not a Sabbath study. Slavery. It's not a slavery study. There's a hundred there's a hundred stories in the nineteenth century and our question is about diet. What political issue are they saying we will get involved in? Loss. Who's speaking? You go ahead. I didn't hear. <laughs> I can't hear anything. Division loss. Temperance. Are we okay with that? Monica said she gave the detail of it, but I just want to say temperance. So today, we say we're going to get into politics. And what political issue are we going to get involved in? Tamina? Tamina? This one, yes? You just said yes? You... So we're not getting involved in politics because we care about animals. We're getting involved in politics. You don't even need to read the newspaper. You just use methodology here. You repeat history. We're going to get involved in politics. With respect to human rights and the climate. Is everybody okay with that? Rekha, all good? Tabina? I don't know.
you you shout it out and, and Monica will translate. They join politics and... Is that a way for to translate? I can't respond. Sure. Sure. I can translate. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, no one heard me. No, it was on when I gave it to you. I told you it's on. I think you are doing it. Yeah, I don't know. So is it on now or not? She switched herself off. So it's muted now? No. No, it's on now. It's on now. So I repeat the whole thing. The Adventist movement, when it joined the temperance movement, it became Laodicea. If that is correct, what does that say us for us today? Yeah, it's a good idea to wait for we speak to finish before. Yeah, we prefer to tell the speakers here off for speaking too long. She already got told off before she even began. Okay, so does she need to repeat that? Okay, so I'm going to turn whatever Tamina said into a statement, so I'm not going to answer the question. I think she said, by following the temperance movement, we entered into Laodicea. Is that what you said? Okay. The rest of it was just repeat and enlarge. The point I want to show here, if you take the diet question, this little dot here, what you can see historically and interestingly, prophetically, how we get involved in the health work. It's our connection to a secular movement. Adventists will tell you we got into health because Ellen White had some visions. I want to suggest we got into the health work because of the independent secular temperance movement. And I'm suggesting if we can see the 19th century or the alpha of modern Israel, in that light, in that model, it sounds like today. And today... Is this movement interested in health? No. What, what we're interested in 
is human rights and the environment. And we end up being interested in politics. Because that's what number two is interested in today. Can I go? Yeah. You might be going here, but you might not. But surely climate change has a massive impact on how we eat because climate change and human rights is definitely connected to not consuming number three, meat, because that has a great effect on the environment, climate, and human rights, because whatever happens with climate... You carry on human... the doctor that tries to make Oh, you. yeah, I forgot. Forgot and it all fizzles out. <laughs> so. Okay. so, climate change and human rights is definitely connected. To diet. Why do you feel you have to make that statement? passionate about health and I wasn't sure if you were going to connect it because you're passionate about health everybody on number two here they were brainwashed to be passionate about what Esther You said the word, that's why I pointed to you. Tamina? It's one word. Slavery. Okay. It's got nothing to do with slavery. We could really easily get slavery into that. Or equality. But I said, don't do that. And when we have a passion about a subject, it will end up hurting us. Because you will lose the, your focus and the rigor, the strictness, And you read into thing, into things. Based upon your biases. And it's just a really bad way to study. Because you might be correct in your logic today, but you'll be wrong tomorrow. So I just advise you not to do that. My point is you can't disconnect human rights and climate change to your point? number three. Point. Nobody thought number two. You can't separate temperance from human rights. And I said, separate them for the purpose of this study. And we should be doing that today. It's not a diet issue. 
And to be honest, the vast majority of the world, including us, isn't really that worried about the climate. We just tag it on because it sounds nice. I don't want to labour the issue. Because the Midnight Cry message was not about climate change. Nor about diet. It was about human rights. And how we get involved and understand what's happening in the world around us, which is called politics. Okay, so that wasn't meant to be an argument with people. It was meant to show that our experience today wasn't just some random thing that happens. That the change in our message didn't just happen. Because some radical feminist joined the movement and wanted to express her views. This is a prophetic phenomena. And what's the definition of prophecy? Time. Morality in time. There's various definitions. And based upon today's study, that wouldn't be the right one. Anybody want to give another go? <laughs> Personal is political. When you say uh, walking a as a prophecy, walking on through the ground, the ground, I can't remember how you say it. Um, I don't know, walking along the ground, you know, in current time. I don't know the words and of it that Alice Pominda said. When I just said, it's not so it's not so random person that joined the movement. I said today sounds like yesterday. And what does sound like mean? One word. Repeat. I'm going to do a bad paraphrase. I was shown that prophecy is a figurative delineation of events. Leading it down to the end of Earth's history. Did that get good translated for you? Everybody good? Okay, so that's the definition of prophecy. So 
Prophecy isn't just what's happening today. It's the events of the past that bring us to today. We had read history properly. If Elder Jeff had read history properly, which we worked out in a 45 minute discussion, When Elder Tess stood up and did all of her thing, he, all the people that have left, all the people that have remained and complained, all three of those groups would have realized should now realize that we're repeating history. And if we're repeating history in 2018, we should have, could have seen prophecy being fulfilled. in a very specific way using the rules that we've just spoken about. Let's pray. Holy God, we thank you. that we have the privilege of understanding your thoughts. As we try to understand better the purpose of our existence, when it comes to the subject of diet, We see how it connects to the message that is dear to us. The great test, equality. In Jesus' name, amen.